HCAM News is supported by our viewers and by Hopkinton Drug, located in this historic New England town since 1954. They are a multifaceted store dedicated to providing clients with an array of health care options. And by Webster First Federal Credit Union, providing financial products with attentive customer service to the local families and businesses of Hopkinton. Visit us at WebsterFirst.com. Welcome to HCAM News, Tom Nappy at the Anchor Desk to keep you up to date with everything you need to know about Hopkinton. On this edition of HCAM News, we take you inside the Golden Pond Kitchen to talk to Reno Bocci, host of HCAM's new cooking show, The Golden Pan. We will show you responses to our question of the week. The planning board discussed zoning on Hayden Row, and we go back in time to show you the contents of a couple Hopkinton time capsules that were recently unveiled. But first, Middle School Assistant Principal Mary Ellen Grady showed HCAM News the major progress made throughout the summer on the Sky's the Limit Middle School Courtyard project. If you look around you can see that as we're speaking they're even delivering the cement. Um, the bricks are in that are going to go in the walkway. They have done the hardscaping, they've leveled the courtyard. Um, we have a lot of exciting things that have happened. Uh, it's, a, it's amazing that we started this four summers ago. I can't believe that we're at this point. And at the end of this summer, it will be um, here for the kids to come out to. We, just have, we have niceties that we need still, but we'll have it you know, ready. And that's due to really the kindness of this community. Um, we've had individual support, people who have given really unbelievably generous donations. Um, individuals as well as corporate um, people, um, businesses that have given in-kind donations, so many things that have made this possible and, and a real reality. It's, it's really amazing that four summers ago we were talking about this and um, I thought it would be done and now it's, it's coming true. So it's very, very exciting for all of us. When did they start working on it this summer? Uh, they started working on it at the very um, beginning of July. And um, so this is, you know, we're just into August now. So they've done a, a ton of things here. By the end of the summer, the hardscape with the bricks that um, people have ordered will be down and in. The performance area and the pergola will be installed and the space will be ready to for use with, by the students, the teachers, and the entire community. So it's going to be a beautiful space for all of us to use, which I can't wait for. So, uh, you know, I'm, I'm just, I'm over the moon about it because it's going to be fantastic. I just can't wait till the day we come out here. And it'll be just such a relief when we come out that day and cut that ribbon and say, you know, I have a big celebration with the whole community and everybody who has been unbelievable in four years giving of their time and their energy and their talent and their spirit everything so, so it'll be ready by the time school starts in yes, september that's the plan that is the plan it'll be here um it, for the community in september for our kids for our teachers um it's going to be great we still are looking for um, donations because there are things that we still need to put in benches, um, tables for the kids, plantings. Uh, we, we have everything to get, you know, all of those basic necessities in so that it's usable, but all of those niceties still we're raising money for. So um, if anybody out there has, you know, has, uh, would like to help support this, that would be fantastic. Uh, I'd love to have it totally finished by the end of August when the kids come in. That would be so amazing. So if you, you can do anything and you want to be part of this unbelievable um, adventure, please help us out. That would be great. All right. Well, we look forward to the ribbon cutting ceremony. Right. Uh, you will be here. You know that, Tom. Absolutely. Thank you. I'm so excited. For more about the courtyard, be sure to search for Sky's the Limit Courtyard Project on Facebook. Currently, 79, 81, and 83 Hayden Row Street are being used for business purposes. Recently, owners of the properties proposed a change in zoning from the current status of Residence B to business zoning at the planning board meeting. At the August 10th planning board meeting, owners of 79, 81, and 83 Hayden Row Street proposed a plan to the board to change their zoning from residence B to business, their argument was it would allow owners to make minor changes to their property 
and would allow them to be in the zoning more suitable for their uses as the properties are currently used for business purposes. This is a non-conforming use that uh, is allowed by variance. And uh, as you know, any time that uh, uh, you have a change in a, in a non-conforming use, you need to go back to the Board of Appeals and request uh, approval for that. Uh, by making this use conforming, uh, it will free up um, the ability of the owners to uh, to make minor changes to their property, and it'll also free up the time for the for the uh, for the Board of Appeals not continually to hear this. Um, it is a goal of zoning, as you know, uh, to make the uses conforming to the zoning district in which they're they're located. So uh, I think this is in the best interest of both the town and um, you know the owner uh, to make that conforming. Some of the objections of the board was if the neighbors would be okay with it. Claire Wright argued that this is allowing business to creep into residential neighborhoods. And a single house to turn into business. But to Mr. Davies' point, the dentist's office, I remember sitting on the design review board when the expansions of that building were undertaken, and they made specific effort to keep it in a residential style in recognition that they were part of a residential neighborhood. And a big difference when you change from what it is now to business is that all of a sudden there's a whole um, host of business uses that are now allowed by right, right into a residential neighborhood, but, right up against but, the residential But Claire, that, that business use is already use. allowed in the, in the, that, that business use, I mean, I respectfully say this, I understand your point, and if the, if the business, office. if the business use were to creep down the street, mm -hmm. then, then I can understand your concerns, but the use is not, the actual use of the property is a business use and we're not suggesting that that be changed all we're suggesting is that the the actual uses conform to the to the zoning district the board decided to look further into the proposal and seek further guidance from the zoning advisory committee on the issue be sure to catch all planning board meetings airing on hcam you can also watch previous meetings on our website by heading to hcam.tv slash government this week on HCAM News, we introduce you to a new segment on the show called Question of the Week. Each week, we will reveal the opinions of people in the Hopkinton area on various topics. Our first question of the week was in light of the Deflategate controversy with the New England Patriots. We asked, how many games do you think Patriots quarterback Tom Brady should be suspended for? Here were the responses. Zero. None. Zero. <laughs> um, uh, you know, I'll, I'll leave it in the, the capable hands of Roger Goodell. Oh, that's a no-brainer. You shouldn't be suspended for any games. Maybe a fine, maybe not a fine. I still think he's completely innocent anyways. He should be suspended, like, I think two games, just because um, he didn't give up his cell phone information. That's my opinion. Well, what do I think? I don't think he should be suspended for any of the games. I think it's ridiculous. Really, I only think one, if that, because I can think of so many worst offenses, and it's not even clear whether or not he actually knew about this. One. Reasonably one. He knew. <laughs> Zero. I don't think any. Yeah. Zero. Okay. I want to see him play. Well, I could accept one, but I think it should be none. No, I don't think Brady should be suspended at all. They clearly don't have a case. There's no hard evidence. Probable does not mean that he's guilty of anything. So I think it should be zero games. We want your opinion too. Head on over to our Facebook page, facebook.com slash HCAMTV, and let us know what your take on the matter is by commenting under the video. Coming up next on HCAM News, we will tell you what the new HCAM series, The Golden Pan, is all about, show you some items from a couple Hopkinton time capsules that were recently revealed, and Courtney will get you up to date with everything coming up on the HCAM channels with our HCAM Insider. A ton more ahead on HCAM News. Stay tuned. 
HCAM programming is supported by our viewers. Thank you. And by Golden Pond Assisted Living, honoring resident choice, dignity, and independence. Our health and wellness focus keeps residents active. Golden Pond, state-of-the-art senior housing and health care services. And by WPC Pest Control, a family-owned business for over 35 years. Owners Jim and Rebecca Mazzucchelli provide honesty, respect, and integrity, performing safe and effective pest control services. They service your home like it's their home. We are the girls from Girl Scout Troop 72969 from Hopkinton. We would like to thank Mr. Trojan for the awesome tour of the H Camp Studio. If you are interested in fun and adventurous field trips, we recommend one, to learn a Girl Scout Troop. And two, visiting H Camp to see how local television is created and produced. We also want to give a shout out to Kalala Supermarket to thank Dale for our Girl Scout Troop tour. And for always giving us a space to set up our cookie booth. Welcome back to HCAM News. At a recent Board of Selectmen meeting, contents of two Hopkinton time capsules were revealed, one from 1882 and one from 1939. For those of you that missed it, here is a look at some of the contents. Two time capsules were extracted from the cornerstone of the Korean church, formerly the first congregational church, one from 1882 and one from 1939. The time capsules were opened and presented at the June 23, 2015 Board of Selectmen meeting. A local veteran, Mike Whalen, had to use a few methods to get the tightly sealed time capsules open, but once he did, some very interesting articles of Hopkinton history were found. Yeah. Took it off already? No, no, but I mean, we have it open so you can slide everything out. We oh, we had to cut it. We couldn't just unsaw it. Well, you know, it's all paper you know, in there. Paper you know, I started putting burn. a flame on. I thought, yeah, you know, good to to maybe back right off on that. So you just like swipe it down. Just pull it down. That's it. This is from 1938. The the this is about. I believe this is maybe the dedication program from the. Ceremony dedicating the church. I don't know if you have these in your records, Pastor George. <laughs> and then um, this looks like. Oh, to you who open this box in future years. <laughs> To you, May 14th, 1939, on September 21st, 1938, a hurricane struck the eastern coast of the United States, starting around New York and continuing through New England, leveling forests, houses, barns, and churches to the ground. Churches with high steeples suffered the most damage. Over 100 congregational churches were destroyed in part or completely in Massachusetts. Our own church in Hopkinton was a total loss after the 100-mile gale blowing in from the ocean had done its work. While it seemed a terrible calamity to lose our old church building, the new one will be so much more fitted to meet our needs that we should be able to carry on a more far-reaching program than was possible in the old building. Every inch of space is being utilized except the room directly above the chapel. It is hoped that this will be finished for club rooms at some future time. As the minister of this church since April 15, 1936, <clears throat> I want to add that a finer group of people no minister has had the privilege of serving. Their loyalty, enthusiasm, and consecration to the tremendous task of rebuilding a church which, ha which had no wind insurance has made it a joy to work with them. May I also add that if and when this box, which we are preparing for the cornerstone, is opened because the church is being rebuilt or remodeled, sorry, <laughs> carry on in the same spirit and determination and you will see an even more glorious church built in the name of our common Lord and Master. And then it's signed, Edwin B. Nyland, Minister. I'm very, very careful. What's wrong with that box? It's very tight. That's very tight. I think it's looser. I just don't want to rip anything. Wow. Again, did not stage this, and your report of the school committee. <laughs> 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 and your report of the school committee, the superintendent of schools. Yeah, this whole thing has been rigged. I know. <laughs> I knew we should lock up those boxes. I know. Dr. McLeod, if you're watching, I think she's watching from home. Um, for 1938. Oh, I cannot wait to read this more thoroughly. I'd like to see the budget. Yes, yes. Uh, I suspect. Do you want to lay? 
This is a letter addressed to Mrs. Herbert S. Heath from Hopkinton, Massachusetts, which I feel a little awkward opening. <laughs> um, here's a, a postcard of um, the Siemens and Cobb thread mills, which is Hayden Row. Yep. And then um, this, oh, here's a postcard of the First Congregational Church. Um, let's see if there's anything else easy to, uh, what is this? A receipt, well, not filled out, from Clover Farm Store, C.A. Wood, proprietor in Hopkinton. Oh, 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 it's a good comment then. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the school budget in 1938 was $42,657.99. And I'm sure it was well spent. There were 22 teachers in the Hopkinton Public Schools in 1938. All in, 22 teachers. Mike, look at this. 1833, the assessors of the first parish give notice that they have delivered to Daniel Eames, the treasurer and collector, a correct list of the parish taxes for the year 1833. I know, isn't it incredible? These are you can see more from the time capsules on our photo gallery website, seeninhopkinton.org. The Golden Pan is a new upcoming series on HCAM. Host Reno Bocci, along with staff from Golden Pond Assisted Living, cook up some delicious food in the Golden Pond kitchen and let you know how you can make the recipe at home. Here's a look inside the Golden Pan. Good morning. Here we are at Golden Pond with our Golden Pan cooking show. And we're going to make antipasto today. And in my nationality, when you invited somebody over for the dinner that you wanted to impress, you made an antipasto. I never went to school for any kind of cooking. I come from an old Italian family. And my dad was one of these kind of guys that when we came home from church, He'd point to you and say, you make bread, you make pasta, you make sauce, and you were allowed to screw up only once. And uh, that's, I've been making homemade pasta now for over 40 years at home. Oh, wow. Now, is pasta your favorite thing to make? Or do you have one a favorite my, dish? One of my favorites is, is making pasta, because I never found anybody that doesn't like it. <laughs> That's very true. Uh, what's your favorite sauce to make with, with, with that pasta? Marinara. And actually, my wife, my wife usually makes the sauces. My wife makes the best marinara sauce in New England. She really does. All right, what are you making here today? We're making fried dough. Uh, in many parts of the country, it's called dough boys or funnel cakes. In my hometown, where Little Italy, we call it pizza frit, but it's fried dough. And I'm also going to be making some fried zucchini this afternoon. Very nice. Now, um, what, what made you uh, want to start the show here on uh, HCAM? S somebody asked me. I had been making little goodies like this right along since I've been in uh, assisted living. I was in... Franklin before coming here, and uh, every month or so I'd cook something, and just people loved it. And when I came here, somebody heard about it. They asked me if I'd do it. I did, and that's what we're doing. You enjoying it? I I love it. Uh, I, there's nothing better to see a smile on somebody's face when they're eating. I agree with you there. What are uh, some of the recipes you'll be showing on H Camp? Well, we're going to be making homemade ravioli. We're going to be making all kinds of pasta. We're going to be making soup with homemade pastina. Whatever Jen decides that she'd like to have, that's what we're going to make. But you can bet your life it's going to be based around pasta. And I'm sure it's going to be delicious as well. I, I hope it is. I hope it is. Wow, that's beautiful color. 
Reno Bachi, one of our beloved residents um, who loves to cook, we thought it would be a wonderful thing to have a, um, a cooking show here at Golden Pond. We've never had one, and he just he went with the idea and was just wonderful about it. And uh, Harry cooks some very delicious food. He, that's an understatement. He really cooks some wonderful stuff. Um, and I think for our next one, he's actually going to cook Italian wedding soup. But he's done an amazing antipasto. He's done um, uh, just how to make pasta from scratch, which is easier than you think. So I think he just adds a lot of cultural flavor to, to the show. Now, do you have a uh, favorite dish that he makes? You know, I'm Italian. I love to eat. So as long as somebody's cooking it for me, I'll eat it. Absolutely. So uh, what's your uh, role on the show? I understand you kind of help out a little bit. I do. So my role is basically Reno's sidekick. Um, he actually is, is instructive and illustrative, but also makes sure that he corrects me if I'm doing something wrong. I tend to move fast. Um, and so he says, you know, slow down, slow down, and, and he'll be able to add a little bit of uh, comedy to our, our show here. Do you, do you enjoy cooking with Reno? Oh, I love cooking with Reno. You know, usually when I'm home, I'm cooking alone, I'm cooking for my family. But to have somebody who loves cooking as much as I do, it's really a pleasure. And I knew when she was poor. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess we'll smell like garlic today. <laughs> Reno, can I put this lettuce in the bowl now? Yes, please. My role on the show is basically just another assistant for Reno. He always needs a little extra help. And uh, he also teaches me how to cook. All right. Now, do, do you have any cooking experience? What's your cooking experience? I actually do. I graduated from Montechusett Regional Vocational Technical School, and I took culinary, art, culinary arts there in high school. So that's what I have for cooking. All right. Now, how is it working with Reno? It's working great with Reno. Actually, I graduated in 1988, which was a real long time ago. And... Um, I really never did a whole lot of cooking other than at home for my family, so I never did anything professionally. And I've learned a lot of Italian dishes with Reno, which has been really nice. All right, now do you have a favorite thing that you like to make? Or? I like to make stuffed grape leaves, which is a, gri which is a Greek dish. Um, I learned from an old Greek woman, and uh, that's one of my favorite things to make. And cheesecake. <laughs> <laughs> All right, now I heard they're making a uh, fried dough on the show today. Are you excited about that? I'm excited about fried dough. Fried dough is one of my favorite things to eat, even though it's very fattening. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, we're going to serve this now with garlic bread, and all these people are going to get sick. <laughs> they're really not. I think they're going to really enjoy it, and I hope they do. Thank you very much. Be on the lookout for The Golden Pan, airing soon on HCAM. For more about what's coming up on the HCAM channels, we turn things over to our promotions coordinator, Courtney, with our HCAM Insider. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the latest edition of the HCAM Insider. On Saturday, August 22nd at 5.30 p.m., the Missy Maxfield Project performs cover songs by artists from the 60s to now on the last 2015 Concerts on the Common. On a new Business Matters on Wednesday, August 26th at 8.30 p.m., Michael Peschler shares how he started his business, how he helps people improve themselves, and his goals for his business. One of my coaches at Hopkinton was the Phil Shalosky was the head coach at Nipmuc at the time I wanted to start so I was like literally in the backyard and under 400 square foot shed and I had a little bit of uh, field to work with and once my coach found out I was doing it he sent me five guys and that was the base unit of my clientele so before, and in that and believe me I was scared I know like I, I knew I knew what I was doing but I never had done it but um, by the time the summer was over and I had them for a summer, everyone progressed, everyone got better. On Friday, August 28th at 9 p.m., Betty Wyckoff shares stories of life with her father, Hopkinton's oldest resident, Sterling Hager, on a new Meet Your Neighbor. I finally asked him, I said, Dad, how come you're so good at that? You're really unbelievable. I said, did you play tennis or something? Oh yeah, I did. I said, what do you mean you did? Yeah, all through high school. I said, how come I never knew that? Come to find out there was a very wealthy kid next door to him growing up. He was an only child and they had a tennis court. Mm. So they always had my father play tennis with this kid. And I never knew it. On Sunday, August 30th at 10 a.m., the planning board meeting from August 24th will air. 
If you want to see all of this programming and more, head on over to our HCAM channels, HCAM TV on Comcast Channel 8 and Verizon Channel 30, and HCAM Ed on Comcast Channel 96 and Verizon Channel 31. As always, thanks for watching HCAM. Now back to you, Tom. Thank you, Courtney. That will wrap up this edition of HCAM News. Be sure to check our website, hcam.tv, or find us on Facebook and Twitter to stay up to date with everything Hopkinton, including upcoming local events. If you have a Hopkinton-related video, photo, or story idea, I want to hear from you. Email me at news at hcam.tv. With your help, we'll cover even more of our community. For everyone here at HCAM, I'm Tom Nappy. We leave you now with the current community listings and upcoming government meetings. Take care, and I hope your August is going wonderfully.